Мы видели э, много раза, что есть э, гипотеза, э, если x над k, где k э, числовое поле, э, и x э, э, rationally connected, rationally Рационально связано. Рационально связано. Mm -hmm. То э, надеемся, что э, x от k тот равно x от, от ak про x в x от ак, где x от ак это множество отделей от многообразия x. Это гипотеза. И сегодня я хотел э, обсуждать, э, что производит, если x нет рациональной связной. Что мы знаем? Что где вопросы? <звы> Какие вопросы? И на первое э, можно спросить, что что скрывами? <звы> И начнем. So, скрывами есть род. G от, G, от, G от X равно нулю, мы все знаем. Okay. Там есть Hasse принцип. Что случается, если G от X равно 1? Равно единице. Там можно э, x над k это гладко, э, гладкое проективное многообразие есть э, так, э, такая группа g, g это g по русски э, g равно пик 0 x от k э, это ди, это ди, э, пикар многообразие от э, x и если x э, Кривая рода одного, там x это главное, главное однородное, однородное пространство от g. Значит, x в H1, K, G. Все люди знают, что это главное народное пространство. Есть дезвие G над X. И, и такая. Что это изоморфизма. Изоморфизма. Значит, G действует над X транзитивно и объективно, если мы расформируем, что случает в К с чертой. No, I thought, uh, I think I will speak in English. It's going to be too slow. Uh, I, I couldn't manage, but I, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. it's really, really good to start. Uh, in Russian also. Also? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, uh, maybe uh, okay, because uh, it's going to be unmanaged, but uh, okay. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's probably yeah, best yeah. It, it will go. I mean, I, I could do it, but it's it's not. I'm not tired, but it's going to be very slow. That's the problem. Yeah. So uh, okay. So the. It's what? It's not under. It's less understandable. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good for being honest. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so if, in general, for any variety, you can smooth projective variety. You have the Picard variety, the Picard variety, and inside the Picard variety, well, you have the well, you have the Picard variety J, which is over there, and in the case of a curved genus one, X is a principal homogeneous space on the J, so you have a class of X in H1 kg, and as usual, X of K is not empty. If I take any field F which contains k, x of f is not empty if and only if the class of x is trivial in H1 kg. Okay. And so uh, our problem is we're interested in variety and that's the principle, so we, we wonder what happens if x of ak is not empty. So if x of ak is not empty, what happens is that the class, you know, this is equivalent to the fact that the class of x belongs to the group sha1 kj, where by definition this is the kernel of H1 kj goes to the product for all the places of k of the H1 kvj. Okay. So we'd like to have a criterion to decide whether this class is trivial or not. Now there's a conditional criterion for this which is, so there's a theorem which is due to uh, essentially castles in the case of curves of genus 1 and generalized by Tate for abelian varieties, is that there is a pairing between Sha1 kj and Sha1 k of, in fact, j hat, where j hat is the dual. So if you have any abelian variety, if A is an abelian variety, there is the variety pick 0 x, uh, sorry, A over k, and that's called A hat. Uh, for curves, it turns out that j and j hat are isomorphic, but in general, it's not. So, so you have a prime like this. And there's a theorem, which is that if sha is finite, which is, a which is a conjecture, then this pairing is non-degenerate. Okay. So that in principle, you have a test to see whether a class is trivial or not. Now the game, which uh, in fact uh, Manin uh, did many years ago, is that you can translate that in terms of power group. So uh, remember that if we have x over k uh, any smooth projective, so I'm going to translate this. So this is a theorem here. As, as you all probably know, this is a conjecture for all abelian variety. That group should be finite, but. Uh, so if x is smooth and projective uh, and geometry connected, uh, then we have an exact sequence, which I discussed uh, several times. Bra of k goes to bra 1 of x goes to h1 k pick x bar goes to h3 k gm. So this is over any field. And this bra 1 of x, I remind you, is the kernel of bra of x goes to bra of x bar. Okay, okay so now, I'm oh, sorry, I, won't, I shouldn't write this here, but anyway. Okay, so... Uh, what uh, extends in the index? One. This one. One. One is one. Well, it's a notation. It's a notation, bra of one. Okay. One, we call it one. I mean, people call it the algebraic part of the bra group because they like to call this one the transcendent part of the bra group, but it's a bad notation. I mean, bra 1 is neutral. It's just a, you have a filtration. You know, the part that dies when you go over to k bar, and then this part. OK, so in the case of a, if x is a curve of any genus, a priori, then what happens is that if x is a curve, bra of x bar is 0. So we don't care. This is sense theorem. And so we're in characteristic 0, OK? Characteristic of k is 0. Um, so in fact, bar, I, bar 1 is just the same as bar of x, so in fact we have bar of k goes to bar of x, goes to h1 k pick x bar, goes to h3 kgn. 
And uh, because it's a curve, the, the structure of the Picard group, you have the peak zero part, which is J. So this peak zero part, which is J with my datation, J of K bar. And then there's a, the, the part which uh, the, the rest is just, the null survey group for a curve is just Z. It's just the degree map. So this is a Galois sequence. So if I apply H1KJ to all that, I have H1KZ which is zero. So in fact, what I get here, I get H1KJ. And it maps onto this group. Okay, so we have this situation here. So I... By peak you mean, mean peak zero? Peak zero, yeah. J is peak zero. This is notation. J is peak zero. Yeah. This notation here. In fact, I, I'm, I'm not very happy with this. I want to change the J to J hat. So... Uh, uh, well, in, in the case of a curve, anyway, they, they coincide. So, okay, let's ignore this point. So, for a curve, so x is a curve, so j is j out. Okay, let's, let's ignore this subtlety here. Okay, so now, uh, um, if I take my element uh, x, I, which is in chi one, chi 1 kg, so I have a class here, x. Which, which is here, and which is ever locally trivial. X. X. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, X is the principle, X lives here. The class of X is the principle of general space, and the J lives here. So now, uh, this X uh, maps to some class here. Uh, and, uh, okay, it, so now we have a number field. So this is zero for a number field. So then, in fact, this class X lives to, to a class here. I call it, uh, in fact, I'm good, sorry, I, I shouldn't take, I'm sorry, I, I take alpha, I'm sorry, I, this isn't what I want to do. I want to take, uh, I want to take an arbitrary class Xi. I start with a class Xi in Sha 1 kj. So I start with a class Xi here, Sha 1 kj. So this diagram exists anyway. So I take a class Xi in Sha 1 kj. Because H3 kgm is zero, I can lift it to some class here. So I won. So there are several choices. Map, yes. it, now it's subjective. So I can lift it to oh, some no. class. Because for number fields, yeah. So this is important, yeah. So this uses the fact that this is zero. It's so it's important that it is in SHA-1 for no one. No, I mean, if, if I start with arbitrary class, I want to create a class in bar 1 of x. And I can only do it if I know that this map is going to be zero, OK? So I, I, I go to zero here. Therefore, there's a class psi 1 here, which lives here. Now, if I started with something in SHA-1, okay, so let's start with something in SHA-1. What happens is the Xi, when I lift it here, well, locally it's zero. So here it's going to be zero. So it will come from something here. Okay, so if Xi, so if Xi, if Xi belongs to SHA-1 kJ, uh, there's a Xi zero, let's say, Xi goes to Xi zero, which lives to Xi-1, okay? So Xi zero over kV, is zero, by definition. Okay, if xi over k was zero, so xi zero is. So when I lift my xi one, when I go over to k v, it comes from the left. So for all v in omega, there exists a, a row v in bar of k v. So that row v gives me the class uh, xi, uh, the class uh, xi one. I'm sorry. Uh, so are you studying elliptic, elliptic curves? Yeah, I'm curves of genus one. Okay. Which need not have a rational point. That's the whole point. Okay, so that's the whole point. Okay. So, so they live to something. Now, I'm, I'm studying a curve of genus 1 with the property that x of kv is not empty for all v. So this is, the, this is part of the hypothesis. Okay. So that implies that the map from bar of kv to bar of x kv is injective. Mm -hmm. Because I can specialize. Okay. So that in fact, when I have my xi 0 here, uh, and I, and um, uh, okay, so th th so there's if I have given psi one here, there's a unique rho v that gives to do this one. Yeah. Okay, over kv. Okay. Okay. So now uh, I see that I'm not completely clear. Um, so now, if I take so now fact, I start with my psi. 
size in 1 kg. I lift it to a Xi1 here. Okay. And then there's a choice because I can lift it up to an element of bar of k. Well defined. Well defined. Up to an element in bar of k. And I, now I, looked, I, I, I do the following thing. I associate to Xi1 the sum for all v in omega of the Xi1 of PV, where PV is a point, an adelic point of X. I take an adelic point in, in, uh, uh, of X. Okay. So you fix it in, in advance? Yeah, but the point is that uh, Xi1 locally is constant. So the value here doesn't depend because Xi1 at the level of kV, came from above kV, whichever point I evaluate on, I always get the same value. So it doesn't depend, independent of pV. This value is independent of pV, so I get a class in Q mod Z. And now, there's a choice here. I could have changed my Xi1 by the number of k. Mm -hmm. But when I take the sum of the values, I get zero. So that thing is well defined. Why do you get because the xi is defined up to number of k, but I seek the sum for all elements in V and omega. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, I repeat. Uh, if you replace xi1 by xi1 plus a delta where delta and bar of k, you get the same value. Because the sum of the local invariance of the delta will be zero. Okay? So we have defined a map. So where the conclusion is all this, is that we have produced a map So given element Xi in Sha1 Kj and given our class X with the, the, the curve X of genus 1 which had the property that the x of kv is not empty. We have produced uh, a certain class, so I, I want to give it a name. Well, this sum, um, so this sum of psi 1 of pv, a certain class in q mod z. Okay. So basically, we start from an element in x which lives also in Sha1 kj. And we have a xi here, and we produce the class. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's, that defines the pairing. Okay. Okay. Between Sha1 kj, where I have mis my x is here, and this elements here, which actually come from, uh, which, have, which have to do with uh, the, part, the part of the Brouwer group, so I look at kernel, prop of x, goes to product for all v in, x, in omega, of the Brouwer of xv divided by Brouwer of kv. So you see, I, I was lifting my elements to the element of Brouwer of x, which were ever locally constant. Uh, I, in fact, because Here. No, no, yeah. So one element, xi. Sorry, this is, not, this is not X, this is another one. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, how to say, a clearly defined element, means you pick yeah. it, uh, and then you... Push it here. No, no, then you made a game. Yeah. But uh, how the pairing depends on the X? We, because we, because we, we're evaluating on, 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 on this KV here. I'm choosing this PV, which are in X of KV, so I'm evaluating on X. Mm -hmm. On local points, yeah? Okay. Ah, yeah. So I, I've lifted two elements in bar of x, so I'm on x, yeah? This x exists, yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. So that, that's the pairing we just constructed. So the, uh, this is the pairing we constructed. And in fact, it's a pairing between what, what you're taking is that you're taking, I could put it another way, I start with number bar of x, mm -hmm. whichever locally trivial, constant, which is ever locally constant. I push it to Sha1 kj, mm -hmm. okay? And then I do this pairing. And this, the pairing is simply taking this element mm -hmm. and evaluating on the x of, k, uh, x of AK. 
So I'm, I'm taking this element, I take the sum of the values here, and I repeat, mm -hmm. it doesn't depend on the choice of the point. Mm -hmm. So now, the claim is that this pairing here is the castle state pairing. So uh, something has to be checked, yeah, okay. Here's the castle state pairing. Yeah. And this is what Panin was claiming in uh, 1970. Yeah, okay, but uh, once again, okay, taking that to castle scheme, in fact, you didn't describe the pairing. Uh, no, I didn't say what it is. But I mean, you have to prove, I mean, to prove that it is non degenerate you must use a definition. Now, the definition was not like this in, in okay. Castle, so it was a different definition. Mm -hmm. So there is something which has to be done, uh, which is uh, you know, some hard mm -hmm. work to check that the pairings are the same. Mm -hmm. And now the point is, it, once, I mean, if you believe this, so the pairings, this is the claim, this pairing is, is the same as the Castle pairing, and the consequence is that uh, if, you, if you look at x of ak, orthogonal, so I'm going to call this group here, we, we, we like to call it b of x. Russian B of X. This is a definition for any variety. The part of the bar of X, whichever local A is constant. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can look at this element. So the, the claim is that if you look at the part of X of K, AK, if you take an X and you look at X of AK also going to the bar of X, uh, if this is not empty, then X of K is not empty. If Sha is finite. So, so the theorem is if Sha of the Jacobian is finite, then you can see with the Brown uh, pair, pairing whether there's a rational point or not. And in fact, you just have to look at the very small part of the Brown group, mm -hmm. the part which is, uh, which is ever locally constant. So that's a translation of this classical theorem in terms of Brown main abstraction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you need the, the base field to be Q? No, any number field. No, no, any number field. There is some small Q. This is K, sorry, my, my handwriting is so getting, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so. so. You know that to find a point on an empty curve is very difficult. On the curve of genus one, you mean? Uh, yeah, on the uh, curve of genus one. It's very difficult. Yes. Yeah, right. Now, again, so this, okay. but this is another story, you see, because to co it's always the same story. Mm. Uh, suppose we knew somebody tells us that uh, that uh, Tate Schaeffer is group is uh, finite. Mm -hmm. Then this would be an absolute theorem. Mm -hmm. The problem is that how do you decide this? Mm -hmm. And to decide this, you have to do these pairings. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are you are given one element in B of X, no problem. I can if, I can decide whether it's a, uh, it's it, it, it vanishes on X of A K, mm -hmm. and whether there's some element in X of A K on which it vanishes, mm -hmm. because I look locally for a given element. On X of KV, zero for almost all V. There are finite many Vs, there are finite many values. You look at the bad reduction, you compute, just like Hansel's lemma, basically. You, f you decide whether alpha vanishes or not. Mm -hmm. Problem is that you have to do that for all the elements in this group. Mm -hmm. This group conjecture is finite because it's modulo bar of K, it's finite. Mm -hmm. But you don't know how to compute it. <laughs> so it's a complete theoretical theorem, you see? Mm -hmm. I mean, just like that one, you see up there. I give you a class here, and you want to decide with zero. Well, you have to compute the whole group to decide <laughs> whether it is zero. Uh, so it's, it's uh, in French, it's called uh, um, biting your own tail. <laughs> but it's a theorem. <laughs> and the point is that, which is very important in the theorem, is that sometimes you can embed these theorems which are absolutely not computable into some, some uh, induction of the dimension and get something computable on a variety of higher dimension that would contain these sub-varieties. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, so that's the case of curves of genus 1. That's what I want to say about curves of genus 1. And now, I want to say another thing about curves of genus 1 is that, as you notice, I look at the part which is orthogonal to the bra group, so this very small part of the bra group. Mm -hmm. But the conjecture, so let, let me go on. Uh, the, the original conjecture we had for rationally connected variety was a conjecture saying x of k top is equal to x of a k also equal to bar of x. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, for, Abian, for Abian varieties, there is something close to that. So if I start with x, so suppose x now is an Abian variety. Of a number field. Then again, there's work of Castles for elliptic curves and Tate for arbitrary Abelian varieties. 
which says the following. There's something called the dual exact sequence in the literature, which goes like this. You have, uh, you have a complex projective limit of A of K mod N goes to product, and I put a dot here, you'll see in a minute what I mean by this, A of K V, V in omega, goes to uh, H1 K A hat, sorry, that goes to hum, H1 K A hat, A hat is the dual abelian variety, within Q mod Z. Okay. So here there's a map, so the map here is induced by A of K goes to A of K V. Okay. Uh, well, uh, you can take the projective limit because the projective limit of the of kv mod n is just a of kv, except at the real places and the complex places. So that explains the dot. So for dot, if v is, is in omega infinity, you replace a of kv by a of kv modulo the connected component of identity. Okay, so because you, the, the bra group doesn't see that, doesn't make any difference between real points or between complex points, uh, at least on the connected components. Okay, so you 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 modify it, you modify this uh, this uh, you you modify the what happens at the the, the Archimedean places. The map here here the sparing here is simply f k v induced by a map from h one k v a hat to rob of k v. So I mean it's completely general that if you over any field if you're an abelian variety in the dual abelian variety there's a natural map from f f cross h one f a hat to rob of f. Because, uh, well, I, mean, I don't want to explain, but it's a... Uh, now, this H1K A hat is a subgroup of H1K pick 0 uh, A over K, which, as we saw, maps into bar group of A. Okay? In this home? Of no, no, this group here. This group here. This group here is a subgroup of that one. Well, it is a map from this one into... Sorry, this group maps... This group here maps into the a hat is a subgroup of peak, a hat is pick zero so in fact sorry a hat is pick zero so this is equal and then this one maps to h1 k pick a bar which in its turn goes to bra bar a okay so that uh, okay so we have this and now the the theorem by castle sentate is that if and let me put a zero here so there's some contribution by Tsar in, in somewhere here but the theorem is that if Sha of A is finite, then this is an exact sequence. Okay. So now you can reinterpret this in the following manner. So it says that if you have a family of local points, which are orthogonal to this part of the bar group, then it is in the closure of the set of rational points. Because uh, something I should say is that this is where say comes in, is that this group here is the same, this is where say is, is, is the same as a k top inside this. It's uh, the closure of a of k inside this thing is the same as its projective limit. That's a non-trivial fact. Mm -hmm. This is a congruent subgroup problem for abelian varieties. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, in fact, there are papers which you can read because they're, in, they're well, they're, they're in French, but they're in, they're in his vestia. So, <laughs> so, so it's a I mean, this is a beautiful result, in fact, of Sarah. But uh, okay, let's let's keep it. But so the theorem is that. So the theorem of Castle Tate is that uh, if Sha is finite, I repeat. Well, okay, this is so. This is the theorem. So that modulo the result by Sarah, you get that. So, so if Sha. Let really if shaf a is finite, then a of k top inside. And now I'm going to take the Adele's with inside the Adele's with a dot. So I ignore what happens at the uh, at the Archimedean places. I just kill the connected components at the Archimedean places. So then a of k top is equal to uh, a uh, to a of k. A of AK, also go all to the prop of, of A, in fact. I mean, because anything which is orthogonal to the prop of A is at the orthogonal to the subgroup H1K hat, and by this theorem, it comes from A of K. And there's a mystery here, is that the, the transcendental part doesn't play a role. I didn't get the same. So, so, 
what I'm saying is that, okay, we have this definition of f k bar top inside uh, a, okay, let's, let me write this long sequence, a of k top inside uh, a of k, oh, sorry, a of a k orthogonal to bra group of a. Okay, I can pair the adelic points with this. Now, this is in a of a k orthogonal to h1 k a hat, which is an a of a k. Okay, so we're taking the closure with this dot here. We're taking the closure of the set of rational points in the adelic points. Mm -hmm. Well, the rational points are orthogonal to the power group, so the closure is orthogonal. We have this inclusion here. This group is smaller than this one. So uh, this group, this, uh, this, this, this group, in fact, is inside this one. But what the, the castle state theorem tells us is that this is equality if Sha of A is finite. This is castle state. Mm -hmm. This is not called Yotelan, okay? So, um, and so therefore, mm -hmm. the mystery is that there is some mystery here, is that if you're over a, a curve, for curve genus one, these two groups are essentially the same up to the constant part. Mm -hmm. But in, in a higher dimension, th there is some transcendental part to the Bragg of variety, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem to play a role. Ah. It, well, you know, it, 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 the, it, as far as the, these two groups must be the same. Mm -hmm. And we have no a priori, you could say, okay, this is a conjecture, you, you show it's funny. Mm -hmm. Can you prove directly mm -hmm. that there's equality here? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. So the corollary would be that. So what is the transcendental part of the Bravo group? So the transport of the Bravo by definition is the image. So 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 if I take bra, I have bra of x, any variety, I can look at the image of bra of x in bra of x bar. Okay, so bra of x bar. I look at the part which which survives when you go over to x bar. So it, there's some image here. So there's some group here. There's the image of this map. So the group has a filtration. The image with, uh, in the of the algebraic closure, and then this part which is killed by going over to k bar. Mm -hmm. And so what we're seeing here, in fact, it's even more subtle because here we have h one k hat, which is in h one k peak x bar, uh, which is in bra, which is in bar of x divided by bar of k. And so only this part is enough, in principle, to detect the closure of the set of rational points. These two parts, so the, this transfer part correspond to this quotient here. So, uh, the dental means maybe geometric part? Yeah, with geometric, yeah. Geometric would be better. A geometric part would be better. But geometric, one tends to think geometric as bravo x bar itself. Okay. Whereas you just want, you can pair only with the image. I mean, this is uh, so it. Now, the funny thing about this group is that, okay, comment. For any smooth projective or a number field, it's a natural conjecture to think that this group is finite. Mm -hmm. But it's not always zero. Okay. So. okay, so this is the decision for Abelian varieties. So what you see, if we get back to the case of curves of genus 1, where A is equal to, 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 to G, so what we get is, the, so the, the second part of this theorem, if you want, is that if uh, we know that X, x of k is not empty, uh, then we would have that x of a k top is equal to x of a k uh, bar x, okay. if shape is finite. So there's a theorem about existence of a point mm -hmm. which only involves this very small part of the Brouwer group, mm -hmm. and the theorem of density of rational points which involves a whole, well at least for, cu for curves, the whole bra group. Okay, so that's the situation for curves of genus one. So we have uh, solved two problems, yes? Yeah, there are two problems. The existence of a point, and there is, there is, uh, there is density. The existence of a point, uh, the group's view of this. It's, uh, with, it's theory, module shy finite is enough, yeah. yeah. In fact, it's a general phenomenon. That is, if I look at smooth compactification if I look at the, the analogous case of smooth compactification of principal object spaces of connected linear algebraic group, linear algebraic groups, then that's the theorem. And B is the, it was, B is the same, the part of Bravo X which dies everywhere locally. Mm -hmm. so, it's a, so that's a theorem, and this is also a theorem for 
smooth compactification of principal homogeneous spaces of linear algebraic groups. Linear. Mm -hmm. okay. So now let me discuss the case of curves of genus bigger than one. Okay, so uh, any question about curves of genus one? So I mean, maybe to, say, to answer one question you raised, uh, it is not too difficult to show that uh, the classical way of disproving that there's a rational point, we'll come to that later, right? but I'll, I'll, I'll write it on the blackboard at some point. The classical way of disproving that there's a rational point on a curve of genus 1, which had points several locally, is by using these descents or these lambda coverings, and one can translate that into the power group language. Okay, so. Okay, so that's uh, so much for uh, curves of genus 1. Probably I'm going to use some of this again for the Jacobian of uh, curves of genus bigger than 1. Let me erase this one. So two curves of genus bigger than 1. Smooth projective as usual. And genus of x bigger than one. Okay. So now you might say, well, this is a very strange question. I mean, do we have x of ak top is equal to x of ak uh, bra of x divided by bra of k? Okay. Yeah, I would say really What would you say? That would be a really strange question. Yeah. Okay. So for a long time we said very strange question. Mm -hmm. Because you all know that x of k is finite. Mm -hmm. Okay, so file things. Model conjecture, f of k is finite. Yeah, the closure. The closure is just x of k then in that case. So I, I should put maybe I should put a point. Let's ignore this the business with the point. So this is x of k. Mm -hmm. But well, this is an enormous space, but this group is also enormous. So, you know, you take an enormous intersection inside this big space, why should it not be reduced to just a few points? So, uh, why bro of x is enormous? Ah, because oh, that's not a trivial fact. That's a, that's a fact that if you take an... It's not... I mean, regularly I, I find a proof and regularly I forget. Mm -hmm. But the, the theorem is that if you take A over K and abelian variety, And since I come from France, I will say of dimension at least one, uh, then H1K is infinite. So H1K hat is infinite also. So if you take, yeah, this is not. Because H1 of K hat, as I explained, is a part, because uh, so we have A hat. A hat is peak zero uh, A. Uh, which is in, and then H1K hat maps to, and essentially, well, I mean, we can show that the color is finite, just that goes to uh, bra 1 A modulo bra of K. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get this, this part. So it's not, uh, it's not obvious. Um, at the local level, at the periodic level, no, let's, let's, me let's ignore this, yeah. No, 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 huh? let's me. Yeah? yeah? So the right hand side is a group. No, no, it's, no, no, it's a set. It's okay, it's just a set, it's just a set. Now, uh, genus is bigger than one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, right. So, I mean, when you write uh, H1K something, you mean Galileo cohomology? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, yeah, this is a standard notation, I should say. Once and for all, H1K with values in a, in a group, G, is by definition H1 Galois uh, K bar of a K with values in G of K bar. So we have this group with a continuous discrete action and then we take this, this set, if G is not commutative, or this group, if G is commutative. This is a notation, yeah. yeah sorry, I, I'm so used to this notation that I forget to mention it. Oh, but, I just yeah. wanted yeah, yeah, no, no, you're, yeah, Maybe you mean some etal cohomology. Well, it's actually, it's etal, if G is abelian, it's the same as etal cohomology of spec K with others in G. Okay. Okay, so... Okay. So, um... Yeah, so let's, let's put this, I mean, we can discuss this business of H1K, but it's a fact, okay? It's a fact, we can discuss that later. Uh, it's, it's really not obvious to show it, I mean, uh, that it's infinite, but it is infinite. Okay, so, uh, 
Now, the thing is, well, the strange thing is that we never thought this would be a reasonable question. Mm -hmm. And until, you know, we've been discussing this for many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in fact, in the last uh, 10 years, maybe people started thinking that this is not a stupid question. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, not a stupid question. Okay. Sorry, are there examples of such curves uh, for which brow brow loop is com computed? Are there examples uh, where there isn't coherence? Well, there are examples in the case when it's empty. <laughs> no, but no, it's no, it makes sense. You have examples where you show that uh, there's no rational point by using the bar group, and then this equality is true. So your question is more, is there an example where x of k is not empty? Okay. Uh, and then I, yeah, I'm going to show, so okay, this, no, but that's the question, next, we, something, with, I mean, let me, let me go on, you, you, you see, you see what, what is known. No, no, I agree, I mean, I absolutely agree, I, I, I absolutely, I, I like uh, concrete things and uh, applications. Uh, So, there's a theorem. So, to show this equality, we have to explicitly know the brow loop. Well, you will see. You will see. I mean, you will see one example where there's a there's a theorem. A stupid question. Is there a conjecture that we should have? Is this what? Does anybody conjecture that we should have an equality? Well, okay. Let me put names. Uh, Skorobogatov. Uh, I'll put name of people who have worked on this thing. Sharashkin, so the very strange uh, unpublished thesis at uh, Ann Arbor, then Skorbogatov, and then there's work of Stoll and Brin, which I mentioned in one of the lectures, uh, experiments. Okay, so uh, some people have been thinking about And then there's more. Uh, there is, uh, I'll come to that, work of Chicks, Sticks, on the section conjecture of Groton Dick. But that's more using the conjecture than, than, than actually proving anything about it. Okay, so here is one theorem. This is the one that, yeah. Uh, yeah, so here's a theorem. Suppose we have x of genus bigger than 1. So this is our assumption. This is a smooth projective curve, and k is a number field. And so j is the Jacobian of x, big 0. So in fact, this, the, the whole point of my discussion is that the Jacobian should be the dual of that one. <laughs> But never mind. Okay. But it's isomorphic to it. Okay. Uh, okay. Now assume that Sha of the Jacobian is finite and that G of K is also finite. Which happens sometimes. Okay. Uh, then this is true. Okay, and this is a theorem of Sharashkin independently and Skorbogatov. Okay, at least I can read already this in Russian. And this one, I mean, he's been, I don't know, I, don't think, I think he doesn't even speak Russian, this one. Okay, so what is the proof? Okay, so, that's a, that's, so that answers your question, because there are, I mean, people can produce some curves of genus 2 over Q, for which you know so many things about the Jacobian that they, they actually show that uh, these two properties hold. So there are examples which are known, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so proof. So uh, let me write the big diagram. Anyway, it's not here, so I have to. So I look at X of Q, so uh, first of all, uh, well, first of all, uh, it's a subtle point, but uh, um, uh, Sha of G is uh, finite, 
uh, plus um, x of a k not empty. So I can assume that x of a k not, uh, so I assume x of a k is not empty. Otherwise, that's another thing to prove. Okay. Implies that uh, there exists an embedding from x into j into, Jaco into the Jacobian. So we don't know whether x is a rational point yet. Mm -hmm. So we cannot send it to this Jacobian by usual map. But what this implies is that there exists a zero cycle of degree one. And the reason is that, the reason is that uh, you look at uh, peak, so you, there's a natural map from x into peak, something called peak one x of a k, so which are, which are the class, the peak r functor for the classes of degree one. Mm -hmm. This one is a principal homogeneous space. This is a principal homogeneous space of j, which is pick zero. Okay. But the fact that you, you assume that x of a k, so we assume, so we assume that this one is not empty. Otherwise, again, there's nothing to prove. So the fact that this one is not empty implies that this class here, let's call it E, E, which belongs to h1 kg, in fact, implies to, uh, 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 belongs to H1 K, Sha 1 KJ, because X has points ever locally, so this one has points ever locally. And the fact that X of AK bro is not empty implies, because the Picard group of uh, pick zero of this E is essentially the same as pick zero of that one, that in fact, this class E, um, that the, if I take my point PV, I send it to point MV here in A. This point MV belongs to um, uh, E of AK orthogonal to bar group of E. No, but actually, this is functorial. Uh, the the bra mining set is functorial. If you have a map from X to Y, X of AK bro is mapped to, to Y of AK bro. So I start from this point, which is uh, in the bra mining set. I get a point in the bra mining set of E. But now this is a principal genus Abelian variety with Sha finite. So by what we saw before, it has a rational point. Okay, this is the, the, the duality between Sha 1K and Sha 1K hat. So this, the, so this E has a rational point. Okay, so that creates a rational point on this peak one. And it's not, it's not going to be finished. <laughs> no, it's not, uh, um, let's see. So, there's a small, there's a small, small sorry, I shouldn't theorize this. I, I think that uh, what is going to bring back into pick uh, one. No, that's clear. That's because you send a point. There's a map from X to, to pick to itself. To pick itself, sure. Yeah, but then pick one is the part which is of degree, so pick of a K bar is a map to Z. So look at the part which is of degree one. Okay. So I, if I take a point, it's of degree one. Yeah. So it goes to the part which is of degree one, mm -hmm. okay. as a functor. Mm -hmm. Of course, there might be no rational point, but there's a morphism of, of k functors. And it sends x, x into pick one. Mm -hmm. okay. Ah, okay, okay. Okay? Yeah? So, so, so okay, so at uh, this... So, right now, you... So... That, uh, this pick one is trivial homogeneous. Yeah, so pick one is trivial. So pick one uh, x over k, Pick one x over k is, in fact, yeah, it's, it's trivial. So it's isomorphic. To, so I'm sorry. So it, it defines a map. So there's an isomorphism with pick zero, which is j. So we do have a map from x into j. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to at least at this point. Okay. Okay. Now we have x of k goes to product with a dot. X of, let's let's ignore the business with the connected components. Uh, I just want to see the the idea. J of k and here with the product of the j of k v. And we had started with a point uh, p with a PV here, which was orthogonal to the problem of X. We send it to a point MV here, which is orthogonal to the problem of J. Okay. But now, because Shai is finite, we know that uh, G of K top, that we, we know that 
by the castle state sequence for abelian varieties applied to, the J, to J, mm -hmm. we know that the closure of J of K in this is that. Mm -hmm. But J of K is finite. Mm -hmm. So the closure is just a few points. Okay. So, so this is dense, but this is finite by hypothesis. So we, 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 that means that we find a point uh, M0 in J of K, which goes to this family MVs for V in omega. And at the point, at it, there's a dot here, but never mind. Because MV, so MV belongs to JFKV for any V. And therefore M0, if I take a finite place, I find that M0, is in a, M0 lives in JFKV intersection X, uh, um, sorry, lives in uh, JFK intersection X of KV0, and that is X of K. So we find a rational point. So uh, J of K is finite. J of K is finite. So the closure coincides with itself. Just itself. So we have M naught. M naught, which gives us exactly these MVs at all finite places. Okay, sure. And at the, at the infinite places, just in the same connected component. Mm -hmm. But I take a finite place. You? I take a finite place. Right. That point PV was just X sitting in J. Mm -hmm. So that point PV lies on X. And therefore the point M0, which gives me MV, lies on X. Uh, we started with a point with a family which was in X of KV. Yes. It's embedded, in, but it's really embedded. It is an inclusion here, okay? In this product of J of KV. Ah, okay. So PV, because the PV is, is an X, this one has to be, the, yeah, this is, yeah, everything is inclusion. Okay, so this P, this one has to lie on X, and it's a K point. Mm -hmm. So we find a K point on X. Ah, also, also the point is X of K is an intersection. Uh, yeah, it's an intersection. Yeah, it's exactly intersection. intersection. Okay. Yeah, it's intersection. Okay. okay, so that's the end of the proof. Mm -hmm. Now something which I've swept a bit. Well, I mean this is a, this is okay, but uh, and when can be well, okay, this is okay. It's okay. Now, uh, there's something more we can say about this in the case when J of K is not uh, finite. What can you do with this? It's not finite. No, this, this doesn't work, okay? But still, So what about so what about the case GFK infinite? Well, I can still look at diagrams like this. So assume we have an embedding from X to J, which is given to us. Typically, assume we have a zero cycle of degree one. Then what do you have? You have X of K, which uh, lies in J of K. And then already look at one place. So suppose V is a place of good reduction to start with. So do you have a model X over OV? There's a model for J over OV. Okay, and there's embedding like this. Now you can set X to X of OV, which actually is X of KV. And you can send J of K to J of OV, which is J of KV. And then, again, uh, rational points are the intersection. Mm -hmm. So one way to show there's no rational point is that if this intersection is empty. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can do even something weaker. You can look at reduction module FV. So you can, you can, sorry, yeah, this is what, I, sorry, I, look at, I do another drawing. The other drawing is this. I look at X of K, which is X of O, and I reduce modular finite, to the finite field. So I get X over FV. Here I go to J of K, which is J of O, and I reduce modular to the finite field. And again, this is commutative. So if, the image is, so we have, we have this finite set now, this finite set, 
And then we have the rational points of the Jacobian. Well, pe people who know how to compute, mm -hmm. they compute the Moldavia group of some curves, they look at this map, and they look at the image of the rational points in the finite places, and sometimes they can check that none of these points coming from here come from there. Mm -hmm. And that implies that G has no rational point. Mm -hmm. So now this abstraction here to exist a rational point is part of the Brahman abstraction. So one can check that. So the claim is that claim this is Brahmanian. And this is included in well, this is a bra this is so okay, the let me write a condition. If there exists a V where uh, uh, the fiber product is empty, where uh, G of K goes to uh, G of K V, X of K V here, the fiber product is empty, then there's a Brahman abstraction. But of course, you could do that for several Vs at the same time. So you can do that for several Vs at the same time, product of X of KV, fine set. You can do this reduction modulo P, but you can also do modulo, uh, you can do modulo, you could go G of K modulo uh, P to the N, for instance. Mm -hmm. So you get all this. Now the point is that this thing is computable. You see the bra manning is, you, we're talking about an infinite set, this bra of X, which we do not see. Mm -hmm. And we could kind of compute because it's H1K. But this, these ones are computable. So you have a subset of the Brahmanian conditions which you can actually compute. Mm -hmm. And this is what these people have done here. So they call it, they call it the model evasive in their papers. And it's, in fact, it is a theorem that this model evasive is none other but the Brahman abstraction. Is Poonan, uh, yeah, Poonan did so. Poonan was involved in this, but really it's, it's Poonan, well, Poonan was involved in formalizing this, but it's really Stoll and Bruin mm -hmm. who did these experiments. Mm -hmm. And this is where, unfortunately, as I said, uh, I think in one of the first lectures, I explained that they've been studying this for uh, polynomial of the shape sum of AI uh, XI, I ring from 1 to 6, so curve of genus 2, and the AI are in Z and absolute value of AI is smaller than three, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's a big number of curves, mm -hmm. and they have checked that uh, uh, sometimes using, uh, assuming Bertrand's uh, conjecture, mm -hmm. that uh, in this range, this conjecture is okay. The conjecture that the Brahman abstraction is the only one is okay, because they compute, they compute the abstraction by this method mm -hmm. for small Vs, and most of the time they do a look at, they over Q, they look at the prime two. Because some, sometimes it's, it's, uh, the competitions I know, if you take big primes, the competitions explode, so you cannot do them. But if you go at two and you go, mod, you go modulo four and then small values, you can do computations. So on one side, so they do these computations to check whether the set is empty. So if it's empty, well, there's no rational point. And at the same time, they look for solutions of small height. So they have two computers going at the same time. And well, if they reach at some point, they stop <laughs> and they go to the next value here. Okay. So, well, there's some evidence. Okay, that's, uh, now, there's some evidence, and this is not the final evidence because there's a big paper. Mm -hmm. So, this is the next step, which I should mention, which I'm prepared. But. So, there's a theorem of uh, Stoll. Uh, no, of, um, so, theorem. So, this is a big theorem, in fact, published in, in the annals of maths uh, by. Um, Punan and Volor. Sorry? Is it pretty recent? Because it's well, f four years. Uh, maybe oh, it's no. It's, it's, uh, oh, it's pretty. It's, uh, no, I think they, I think they found they started finding in two thousand seven. So it must be two thousand eight. Something like maybe two thousand eight. And two thousand. I forgot. I mean, maybe two thousand eight. Mm -hmm. Is that if you take k to be a function field one variable, or f q of c? And you take uh, x over k, and then there's some uh, technical condition. You want the Jacobian to be, uh, uh, I think, let's say, uh, of maximal variation. People say it's not is trivial at all. Okay, uh, not so the Jacobian x over k. So genus is at least two, and uh, Jacob and uh, uh, this is not isotrivial. 
meaning that it doesn't come from, from FQ, okay? And a strong sense where I forgot the, the exact details. Then in that case, the conjecture is true. So then in that case, uh, X of K indeed is um, X of AK uh, breaks. Okay, so roughly uh, uh, with some small restriction on the type of curve which you look at, mm -hmm. in any genus, that conjecture is proved in the function field case. So you mean the uh, low channel? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, no, but in fact, I don't mean because x is finite. It's finite. Oh. So it's finite. <laughs> so in fact, it is true. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Especially because x is. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So this is the function field analog of that conjecture is proved. Okay. okay. Uh, with uh, some minor restriction. Discuss a little bit this uh, condition. So is it trivial? No, no. One of the way uh, of saying it is not is that trivial. One of the way uh, is uh, to say that uh, replace of Q by algebraic closure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then say uh, this Jacobian is not. Uh, Okay. Has no constant part. That's a, it ah, has no constant part. That there's no constant part. Yeah, it's not that true in the sense that there's no constant part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, something stronger. It's not only that it's not either trivial. Is that there's no uh, constant quotient. Constant yeah. quotient. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. What do you mean? By because an Abelian variety can break up as a product of smaller things. So you, you could have an Abelian variety, the Jacobian, mm -hmm. which in fact that happens, which is uh, isomorphic or isogenous mm -hmm. to a product of two Abelian varieties. One which comes from FQ bar and one which doesn't. Mm -hmm. So it has a quotient in that case which comes from FQ bar. Mm -hmm. And you don't want this. And, uh, okay. This is a technical condition in the paper. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a big theorem, which, is, which uses a uh, thing from logic. I mean, there's, a, there's, yeah. there's something from logic at, oh, at some point, yeah. So it's like these people proving the, you know, the, yeah, it's, it's Canlan, you know, these people proving the model line conjecture mm -hmm. of a function, the peep torsion part of the model line conjecture mm -hmm. using these things from model theory. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so not the. No, the, 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 there's some ingredient in it ah. which comes from model theory. Yeah, yeah. It's not just model theory. No, there's a lot part, a great part which is algebraic geometry, but there's some part which is a, comes from model theory. Just it's like you know the, the they have to, uh, they have to, I think at some point they have to use the uh, well the, yeah this this uh, which is called Manin Mumford conjecture so this is string of conjectures Manin Mumford uh, model lung mm -hmm. where you like B what Bogomolov proved that if you take a curve of genus at least two over the complex mm -hmm. the set of torsion points of the Jacobian intersect with the set of points on the finitely many mm -hmm. so generalization of this mm -hmm. and in the case when you characteristic p and you look at the p torsion part. And the Jacobian, it's not obvious, it's really a difficult yeah. theorem. Uh -huh. And so that part, uh, people did it using model, some model theory. Mm -hmm. And it comes in, into this, uh, this, uh, this proof here. It's very P, P, it's a very thing which is very, has to do with P a lot. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say about curves of genus. Oh, no, no, I'm not finished with curves. Then one final word about the section conjecture. So you have, uh, so if I take x of a k, a smooth projective curve over a number field, you can, there's an exact sequence, which some people love very much, which is pi, and you fix a, a geometric point, spec k bar goes to, uh, to, to x. Then there's a sequence which people like, which is this one. So you have the Grothendieck pi one mm -hmm. of this variety with respect to this uh, fixed point, and there's a short exact sequence which has Galois k bar over k, mm -hmm. and and I mean if you don't like too much this object, basically what you're looking at is you're looking at k of x here, and you're looking at uh, Sorry? You like this object. You like this object, okay. <laughs> no, baby, you can think it in terms of uh, absolute Galois groups. Uh -huh. 
and uh, the part which is unrefined, basically. Okay, so anyway, that's, and so if so, there's a map from x of k to something they call the section of this sequence. If you have a rational point, you have a section here, and uh, there's but uh, there's a. Um, and there's a business with up to conjugacy from pi 1 of x bar x. So you, it's, you get sections uh, up to conjugacy by pi 1 x bar uh, xi. Okay. And the Grothendieck section conjecture, Grothendieck section conjecture, is that this is a bijection. Of finite sets. And of course, I, okay. So that's a famous conjecture. So which of them is finite? The, the, the well, I mean, well, x of k is finite by far things. Oh, okay. So if you uh, uh, see, so one point is that the injection here, I, I, I won't be able to tell you the proof, but an easy argument using the model, simply the model of ACRM, that G of k is finitely generated, shows that this map, in fact, is an injection. So if you could prove that this thing is finite, you would get another proof of faulting theorem. Mm -hmm. Okay. In fact, I think this was the thing, is that faulting has this famous letter to, uh, sorry, Grothendieck has this famous letter in German to faulting, in which he discusses this, and proposes this as a, as a way of trying to prove that x of k is finite. So this is a conjecture of number fields. Now, uh, I mean recently, say in the last, uh, for, for in, the, in the last, uh, what, uh, let's say five years maximum, people have started thinking that maybe there's a similar conjecture over periodic fields. Mm -hmm. So, similar conjecture over periodic fields. Okay. And uh, what is known is that the case of the reals is, is a theorem. So over R, this is a theorem. How does it sound? Sorry? How does it sound over reals? How does it? Uh, well, I mean, you have, a, you have Galois C over R. This is n mod 2 here. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, and so uh, this is a conjecture. This, in fact, the theorem is just a reinterpretation. of work of Witt back in 1933 and Cox and, uh, and varieties of the rails. So this is something we discussed at some point that there's a way to decide whether, so the question is you want to decide whether the variety has, uh, has a point over the rails. Okay, yes. okay. okay and then, uh, well, there are criterion of cohomological nature. Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, for a curve x over the rails, what Witt proved is that x of r is not empty if and if the prob of R injects into the prob of X. Mm -hmm. So, which actually is the same as saying that minus one is the sum of two squares in the function field. Which is the same as saying that there's a map, a subjective map from X to the conic X square plus Y square equals one. <laughs> okay. So the famous theorems, is, well, you know, minus one is of two squares, yeah. then you have a map, dominating map, from 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 your curve, two, mm -hmm. two x squared plus y squared equals one. Mm -hmm. One one. So minus one. Sorry, of course minus one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, so in fact, I don't have to say it's dominating. There's a map simply, the map from this into that. So, so there's in fact it's I, I, in fact Wittenberg has told me that the result of Witt, of Witt is not quite enough to prove this. You have to do a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So in fact, it's more Cox and Cox was around. Uh, I don't know, maybe about 72 or something like that. I forgot uh, this one. Anyway, these are these criterion over the rails where you can tell from the cohomology whether there's a real point or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, restate this in terms of width. Uh, uh, For width? For width. My width was really, was really like this. No, 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 no. Width was this. Huh? Uh -huh. But width was this. But I mean, in terms of. In a higher dimension? Of, no, no, in, width, in terms of width groups. Uh, or, or I mean, this is something on the filtration. This is I2 modulo I3. Uh -huh. 
So okay, okay. yeah, but you can yeah you can. Um, I think for high dimension varieties, you have the similar result, mm -hmm. but it would be the same about i n plus one over i n plus two for n big enough. Uh -huh. okay. 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 So anyway, this this is known that people have been. I mean, many people have been rewriting this. So Stix has this uh, detailed in some paper over the rails. Okay. And there's another thing which has happened is that people have a bi-rational version of this conjecture where you look, not look at pi 1, but you look actually at the whole Galois group. You, can look, look, you, know, you could look at the Galois. Ah, okay. uh, Galois of uh, k of x goes to Galois k bar over k, and then Galois of k, uh, k of x bar over k of x. And also the same question. So that's called the bi-rational section conjecture. Mm -hmm. And in the p-addicts, this, this is a theorem of, 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 of um, Ah, gosh. So over P, it's a theorem of Königsmann. So, uh, um, sections. so if there's a section here, so you take Galois, of the absolute Galois group. So not only you look at the coverings which are ramified also over, over your curve. Okay. So if you have a section over the, uh, so it is a periodic field. If you have a section for this, then your curve has a periodic point. But this is with the whole Galois group, whereas this one is smaller. It's a, so, you know, this one is a, maps onto that one. Okay. And so, anyway, so this is the situation. And so the, the remark is that, which was made independently by Wittenberg and by Schix, is that. So here's a, this is a proposition. It's not very deep. So it was done in. Wittenberg didn't write it, and Schix wrote it. Is that. So if we take x over k, our curve of genus at g at least 2, or k and number field, then if you take, so the section conjecture for x uh, over each kv plus the hypothesis is that x of a k is equal to x of a k uh, dot top, uh, bra of x. So these two imply the global section conjecture. Over k. <coughs> so, well, that's, uh, that's what we know for the time being. So unfortunately, we cannot. If we could do it with a rational section conjecture, it would be better. But uh, because we know it over the periodics mm -hmm. and over the rails, but uh, that's uh, that's uh, anyway. That's a connection between the two properties.